Today, we're diving into what ports are in the world of computing. Think of a port as a virtual meeting point, not a physical one where various programs and services chat and share data. It's kind of like assigning a specific door for each type of service in a huge building. Each door leads to a different room, whether it's for browsing the internet, sending emails, or transferring files. Every port is known by a unique number, ranging from zero all the way up to 65,535. Common ports you may have heard of include 80 and 443 for accessing websites, 21 for FTP or file transfer protocol, and 25 for email services. These numbers are not random. They're paired with an IP address, which is like a postal address for devices on a network to facilitate data exchange. So how does this work in real life? Imagine you're trying to visit a website like Wikipedia. Your computer will first translate wikipedia.org to an IP address. Then, to access the web page, it attaches port 80 to this IP address, because port 80 is the standard for web traffic. Once Wikipedia's server receives your request, it sees port 80 and knows you're looking for a web page, not an email or file transfer. But what's happening under the hood? You usually don't see IP addresses and port numbers, but there's a neat trick behind the curtain. Using the netstat command, you can see all your network connections and port activities. This is super handy for troubleshooting or just satisfying your curiosity. Let's say you're on a Windows PC. Open the command prompt and type netstat-n and hit enter. You'll see a list showing connections like the one to Wikipedia, including your local IP address and the port number your computer is using for the session. The foreign address section will display Wikipedia's IP and the port 80 connection. Now, about those port numbers, they're assigned by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, or the IANA, and fall into three categories. System ports, which is 0 to 1023, like the ones we already talked about. User ports, which is 1024 to 49151, which companies and developers can register for specific services. And dynamic ports, which is 49152 and 65535, which are free for your computer to use during a session. You might wonder why you sometimes see ports like 21 and 80 on your own computer. That's because any computer can act as a server, allowing others to connect to it for services like FTP or hosting a website. Your computer will use these well-known ports to listen for and establish connections in these cases. Now, let's wrap it up with an example. Say you're browsing both Amazon and a local news site, while also connected to an FTP server. Running netstat-n again, you'll see your computer's IP and the dynamic ports it's using for these connections. For the websites, you'll spot port 80 or 443 if the secure sites are using HTTPS. And for the FTP connection, you'll see port 21. Ports are a crucial part of how devices communicate over networks, and understanding them can be a game changer in networking. I hope this helped you to see the invisible yet vital part of our daily digital lives. Like, subscribe, and share your comments down below. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.